Hello. When I was last involved with vehicle emissions some years ago, I was a development engineer and emissions was a highly technical subject. Today it's just one of the mainstream green issues that have become part of our way of life. Now everyone seems to know about ozone layers and nitrous oxides. So only in the past few years that we've seen the dangers and started to do something positive about reducing one of the main causes of emissions, car exhausts. That's why my team of engineers here at the Vehicle Inspectorate have been devising a reliable, foolproof means of testing vehicle emissions, one that can be easily fitted into the tightly packed MOT test procedure. What happens if the car won't idle properly or if the exhaust pipe is leaking? What about a car that's burning oil? Should that go through the test? That's what our series of training courses has been all about. Practical, instructive and tackling the issues that are certain to be raised by your customers if their car fails the emission test. Sure, the standard test itself is child's play, providing it all goes by the book. But it's up to you. It's your legal responsibility to apply these new regulations. And you also owe it to your customers and to the world at large to get it right. So I suggest you watch this video to remind yourself of the main points you learned during your training session. Think of it as playing your part in protecting our environment. From the 1st of November 1991, all cars, vans and lorries with four wheels or more and powered by a spark ignition engine must undergo an exhaust emissions check as part of their annual MOT test. By the time you watch this program, you'll already have attended a formal training course on MOT emissions testing. This short video program is designed to act as a refresher as well as a source of practical help, enabling you to be thoroughly prepared for the 1st of November. The video reviews the following areas, just as you covered in the course. These are, one, the background to emissions testing, two, the safety requirements involved, Three, what is being done to reduce emissions. Four, gas analyzing equipment. Five, the MOT emissions test procedure. And six, possible causes of failure. As we have a fair amount of ground to cover, let's recap on the background to exhaust emissions testing. It was nearly 30 years ago when an American named Ralph Nader began campaigning for the level of exhaust emissions to be regulated and for legal levels to be set. As always, it took several years for anything to happen, and it was during 1968 in the state of California that the first legal controls were introduced. Since those days, emissions levels have decreased quite significantly as engine efficiencies have improved. But due to the ever-increasing number of vehicles on the world's roads, emission levels in the atmosphere are still increasing. But before we consider controlling emissions, we should understand some of the gases that are emitted from a vehicle's exhaust. With perfect combustion, the various hydrocarbons in petrol combine with the oxygen in the air to produce carbon dioxide and water. But unfortunately, perfect theoretical combustion never takes place because of the various constituents which are present in petrol and in the atmosphere, both of which cause pollution. In addition to carbon dioxide and water, which we mentioned earlier, the other main constituents of exhaust emissions are nitrogen, about 70%, and carbon monoxide, which is less than 4%. Of these, it's carbon monoxide which is the dangerous one. It's colourless, odourless and tasteless, but very poisonous. Even a small percentage in an enclosed atmosphere can kill you in a relatively short time. So, do you remember what you were told on the course? Never run a petrol engine in an enclosed space. Always ensure that extraction equipment is used where it's available, or if not, always ensure that doors and windows are open to provide a good circulation of air to disperse the exhaust fumes. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, is non-poisonous. It's a natural constituent of the atmosphere, although it's also reckoned to be the biggest single factor in global warming, the greenhouse effect. 
However, as it's a natural product of combustion, when using petroleum fuel, our chances of reducing its level in the atmosphere are rather limited at the moment. Nitrogen, which is the largest single element of exhaust gases, is also harmless. But when it comes to hydrocarbons, there are many different kinds, most of which are completely harmless, although a few are known to be dangerous in very high concentrations. So, with all these gases and other impurities floating about in the atmosphere, it's no wonder there's so much concern about atmospheric pollution and a real fear for our health. Right then, how do we set about reducing all these harmful emissions? Well, to start with, measuring the hydrocarbon content of vehicles' emissions will give a good indication of the engine's efficiency, or otherwise, by registering the amount of unburnt petrol passing through. OK, so when we've done that, how do we reduce the harmful products emitted from petrol engines? To a certain extent, improvements have evolved naturally as engine management systems improve and carburettors are replaced by fuel injection systems. However, two popular methods of reducing harmful engine emissions are 1. Lean burn engine operation, which uses excess air, and 2. Stoichiometric or lambda engine operation where no excess air or fuel is used. This method is combined with a catalytic converter. Catalytic converters can be used with lean burn engines, but are not very effective due to the excessive amount of oxygen in the system. Generally speaking, this country favours lean burn engines, but after January 1993, all new petrol engine cars will have to be fitted with catalytic converters. By this time, emission limits will be so low that only catalyst-equipped cars will be able to meet them. There are, of course, a number of different catalytic converters available to vehicle manufacturers, but the most popular, and so far the most effective, is the three-way or selective converter. Basically, the catalytic converter appears very similar to a normal silencer, but inside it is a honeycombed ceramic structure, which, if spread out, would cover several football pitches. And this vast surface area is coated with a fine layer of platinum and rhodium, which causes a reaction with the exhaust gases to convert the hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide and oxides of nitrogen into water, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. This reduces harmful emissions. So with a catalytic converter fitted and provided the engine mixture is correct, the amount of all three pollutants will be reduced sufficiently to comply with the toughest of current regulations. The first step on introducing emissions regulations in the UK comes into effect on the 1st of November 1991. Certain vehicles will have to undergo an exhaust emissions check as part of their MOT test. What this means is that firstly, all petrol engine vehicles, whatever their age, would be subjected to a visual check for excessive black or blue smoke. Second. All vehicles which were first registered on or after the 1st of August 1975 will be required to undergo a gas analyzer check to test for excessive carbon monoxide or hydrocarbons in their emissions. Finally, the carbon monoxide content will be measured as a percentage of the total exhaust emission and the hydrocarbons will be measured as parts per million. The standards which you'll have to test to from November the 1st 1991 are 1 for vehicles first used on or after August the 1st, 1975, 6% carbon monoxide, 1,200 parts per million hydrocarbons. And 2. For vehicles first used on or after August the 1st, 1983, 4.5% carbon monoxide, 1,200 parts per million hydrocarbons. Although these standards will become more stringent in the future for younger vehicles, they are quite undemanding at present and any modern car that's been properly maintained should have no trouble in passing. However, the carbon monoxide figures for some vehicles may be slightly worse if they've had their timing retarded for unleaded fuel. Checks currently planned for catalyst-equipped cars will only show a complete failure of the catalytic converter. So, to conduct these tests, you'll need a two-gas analyzer which is approved by the Vehicle Inspectorate and is capable of measuring the carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons content of exhaust gases. A number of accredited gas analyzers, both two-gas and four-gas, are available on the market from a variety of manufacturers, 
and all of the equipment shown here are approved by the Vehicle Inspectorate. For further information on approved equipments, you should refer to the Vehicle Inspectorate Special Notice. Another point you should remember from the emissions course is the fact that although the Vehicle Inspectorate have the responsibility for assessing and accepting exhaust gas analyzers, they do not make recommendations as to a particular make or model. Also, the only legal requirement is that MOT test stations have a two-gas analyzer, complete with the necessary certificate of acceptance, and which is printer compatible. However, it's important that the equipment should be correctly calibrated, which means regular checking to ensure that it's operating within the tolerances laid down by the inspectorate. Test stations will need to produce a valid calibration certificate when required to do so by the vehicle inspectorate. Like most garage equipment, the gas analyzer will need little maintenance provided it's treated with reasonable care. However, one point worth mentioning is the necessity to keep the exhaust probe clean and dry. Soot and tar deposits will affect the readings, whilst water is probably the most common substance to affect the probe. Right then, let's run through the test procedure as performed on the MOT testers course and will be performed during future MOT tests. First of all, warm up the vehicle and the gas analyzer. Now perform a leak check of the analyzer and its hose if this is the first test of the day. And remember what you were told on the course about using exhaust extraction equipment or ensuring that the workshop is fully ventilated. Next, if oil temperature or rev counter probes are supplied with the analyzer, these should be fitted to the engine prior to the warming up process. Then, check the fuel setting of the analyzer to ensure that it's correct for the vehicle's type of fuel. You should also carry out a hydrocarbons residue check, both by visual inspection and by observing the HC reading whilst sampling clean air. By this time, the engine should have warmed up to its operating temperature and be ready for its scavenging run. Raise the engine speed to 2,500 RPM, or half the engine's maximum speed, whichever is the lower, and hold it there for 20 seconds. Let the engine settle to its normal idling speed, and then fully insert the probe into the exhaust pipe and fix the clip onto the pipe. Wait until the analyzer readings are steady for at least five seconds before recording the CO and HC readings and checking them against the standard for the age of the vehicle. If a printer is connected to the analyzer, a printout should be taken at the same time the readings are taken. And that's all there is to it. However, not every vehicle will pass the emissions test, so it's worth knowing a few of the more usual reasons for failure. To help you with this, notes were provided to you when you attended the MOT emissions test course. Some vehicles will even fail the emission test before being connected to the analyzer. For example, if the engine's tick over is much higher than it should be, then the vehicle should be failed and no further emissions testing carried out. Also, if the vehicle produces clearly visible blue or black smoke at idle speed, it should be failed. There are also a number of other reasons for vehicles to fail the test. It's important that you refer to the MOT tester's manual and your earlier course notes for details of these. So, to summarise, from the 1st of November 1991, all petrol engine vehicles first used on or after August the 1st 1975 will be subject to an emissions test during their annual MOT test. Testing stations will need a two-gas analyzer to complete this test, which is a simple step-by-step -step process as follows. Before commencing the test, ensure the vehicle is idling properly and check for blue or black smoke. Commencing the test. Step 1. Warm up the vehicle and the analyzer. Step 2. Extract or ventilate the exhaust fumes. Step 3. Hose leak and hydrocarbon residue check if this is the first test of the day. Step 4. Fuel setting check. Step 5. Perform scavenging run to 2500 RPM or half engine speed. Step 6. Fully insert the probe into the exhaust and clamp into position. Step 7. 
Allow reading to stabilize for five seconds. Step eight, take and record the CO and HC readings. This completes the program on emissions testing and thank you for participating. Remember, if after your training course and watching this video program you have any queries, always refer to your copy of the MOT Tester's Manual.